All right, excellent, thank you. Uh, so this is gonna be a little more technical. I'm gonna show part of a presentation I did for uh, for GlobalCon. And in this scenario, it's going to be, uh, I'm gonna show one tenant set up in Azure where we have Dynamics 365 and I'm gonna create an app user with a client ID and a secret. And then from a different tenant, I store the uh, store the client ID and secret, how we connect, and I'll store that in the key vault, write an Azure function to retrieve it from the key vault and authenticate it against Dynamics. So the backdrop of how this ties into to Power Automate is using Azure functions, you can uh, call them from a custom connector. So the larger demo is uh, we build this out and then we use your custom connector in Power Automate. So from you know from the flow we pass in a value to our function it makes this journey and then it returns the value back to your flow uh, so that's what i'm going to show today it's going to be a little bit of a jumping around and that's mostly just because of how we have to go about setting things up um, so the technologies that we're going to talk about um, briefly because it's about 10 minutes uh key vault how to set up an app registration and what that means um we are going to write an an azure function app in visual studio it's going to you it's going to uh get values from the key vault sort of um and it will be using the, the new power platform sdk which is still in its alpha build uh, and it's going to be running on dotnet core which is something really cool because the traditional um you know crm sdk can it relies on the full dotnet framework so a lot of kind of newer things going on here. So, so it's pretty cool. Um, to create a uh, an app user, you start by in your Azure instance, um, creating a new app registration. And the app registration is a way to basically create a, um, a user for uh, to programmatically interact with different services. So instead of having a given user, you know, like Bob Smith, and you're using that person's username and password to connect to your instance and do things, now you can create a, uh, a principal by creating an app registration. So when you do that, you'll get a client ID, and this is the identifier for this, you know, this user. Uh, to give it permissions for different services, you can come down to the API permission section, and in this case, I'm adding it for Dynamics. Uh, so the app registration, when we set that up, we have our client ID. That is basically the username on how we identify this user. And then under the secrets area, we can create a new client secret, and this is really our password. So between the username and password, we're able to connect as this user, and then through the API permissions, interact with different services. So I'm tying it here from Azure to Dynamics. Over in Dynamics, we create a new what they call an application user, and you give that application user the client ID, and this is how you're able to associate the Azure, um, you know, that Azure user with some set of permissions in uh, in the common data server. Uh, sorry, in the Dataverse. So this is our basic setup on how we're able to connect. So how do we call into that now? Well, we we have our um, our username and password, or uh, also known as our client ID and our client secret. So we want to create a key vault for that. And a key vault is a super secure way to store those things that you don't want to just put in a, you know, in your web.config or hard code somewhere. So this is a bare bones key vault, and I added a couple of secret entries. So here we have client ID, the client secret, and then the URL for where, where we want to connect to. And if we look at our URL, you'll see different versions as you add or as you change the values, it will give you newer versions. And if we click into it, we'll see, actually show the secret value. It's just my sandbox environment. Um, and the this specific secret has a URL associated with it. So I put that out in Notepad. Uh, 
You can see that's built up with the, the name of the key vault and then the name of the secret. And then this is the identifier for the specific version of that secret. So there's really, there's three distinct identifiers here, but the only two that are really important are the name of the vault and the name of the secret. Uh, if you need an older version, that's what this ID is for. But in pretty much every case, you wouldn't really need that. So we set up our key vault, and then we have our three values that we're secure, that we are securing. So then we can create our function app. The function app is um, just an application that's running in Azure. So we want to, or we need to give the application authorization get into the key vault. The way that we can do that is in the application's identity section. Uh, this will be off on its own. Uh, so you turn that on and that will give it an identity to this application. It will um, add it to your um, to your Active Directory and this object will actually exist now. So we have an Active Directory object for this application. And back in our key vault, we can add that to our access policy. And so what we're saying here, and I'll show you what that looks like, uh, we have three different areas. Um, I'm only going to talk about sections, or I've already talked about sections. And then we have keys and certificates. But in our secret permissions, we can say, um, you know, we want to be able to get and list out secrets uh, from this key vault, and the user or the principal that we're going to associate that with will be the GlobalCon um, live build function app. So what you're saying is that uh, that application can get at this vault in these very um, discrete actions. So that's how we're able to say now that our function app can authenticate to uh, to the key vault and pull out the that username and password that we want. Uh, now we have another step to get that actually get those values into our code. So I did this. I'll show you the, some of the shortfalls, but the uh, shortcomings of this approach. Um, I added configuration values for each of the keys. So client ID, client secret, and the URL. And when you edit that, all that you have to configure here is, it says at Microsoft.keyvault. So that's kind of, you know, code for go to the key vault. And you specify the vault name, global con live build key, and then the name of the secret. And what that'll do is it'll get the latest version of that secret value and store it as a, store that as a configuration value. So I did that for each of the three, um, each of these three configurations. So when we're running our code, what we can do is, actually pull them out as environmental variables. So we can say for the client ID, just pull it from here. And now our um, our variable is able to get it, basically get it from the configuration, which gets it from the config file or from the, the key vault, and then interact with it as if it were in the, you know, in your app config or your web.config. So a really, really secure way to um, to manage those secrets as you move, especially as you move from one environment to another. Uh, now, one of the, uh, um, or I'll come get to shortcomings in a moment. Uh, so that's how we're able to actually pull in our client ID and secret and URL into our code, into our Azure function. Uh, to make it work with the common data service, what we need to include is the, um, we need to include the NuGet package for the Microsoft Power Platform CDS client. And this was introduced in February 2020 uh, as an alpha build. So it's still early. Things will change and they will break. So definitely don't use it for production. But what this is, is the .NET evolution of the traditional CRM SDK that's been around for you know, forever. So this is this will run on the .NET Core, so you can run it on Linux. You can run it, um, you know, 
just about anywhere and still interact with with um, the power platform using the traditional request and response uh, objects that you're used to doing or I'm used to doing. So in this example, uh, what we did in the presentation was um, we will take the label of an entity and a label of field in um, in our model driven app. Uh, query the metadata and return the schema information about it. So I can say like account and then main phone and it'll come back lowercase account and telephone one. Uh, so then we would put that into a custom connector, but the uh, you yeah, know the result is we're able to interact with um, with the dataverse using SDK uh, that that we're familiar with without having to compromise security by you know doing anything kind of hacky with um, with our credentials. So uh, one shortcoming that I found is that um, you can't debug this locally. If I run this now, these values are going to come back as a blank. So what I'm looking to do, and I can do a presentation on this uh, when I get a little more involved, is um, how you would, and there are there are ways to do it. I've seen and I've, I've struggled with it a little bit so far, but um, you're able to basically log in through Visual Studio to connect directly to the key vault and use this with the actual real world values. Uh, so that that's what I'm working on now. I'm not quite there yet, but um, hopefully I'll have something to report back and blog about when that's um, when I get past that point. Uh, but in the meantime, if you write code that never has any issues like Mike, this is a good way to do things. You can just put it up there and, and know that it'll run. And that's uh, that's everything I wanted to share. I didn't realize Mike dropped off or I wouldn't have said that about him. <laughs> um, but that's everything I wanted to show. We have any any questions or thoughts uh, about this? That was awesome. And you, you did a full presentation at GlobalCon? Yes. Yeah, this okay. was um, yeah, we this actually aired earlier today, so I didn't want to didn't want to get into too much detail and take away from that. Um, uh, that's great. Um, are you delivering this anywhere else? Um, I have. So I did a I did a similar session at uh, or Mike and I did a similar session at GG Summit or Power Platform Summit, I think in 2018. OK, OK. And in that example, what we did was, you know, we still kept the same general scenario. But it used the. Uh, used the traditional CRM SDK, which relies on the full .NET framework. And because of that, we had to use a downgraded um, version of the Azure function framework. So when you set that up, um, let's see if we can get back to the settings. Uh, might take me a minute to find it. I'm not going to find it. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I so, wasn't trying to go down a rabbit hole. I just, I just was just asking mm -hmm. in general. You know, where people yeah. could find that. The well, it sounds like if they want uh, GlobalCon, uh, I believe GlobalCon, you can watch recordings uh, for a fee. So um, it's mm -hmm. definitely, I think, worth the investment if you're trying to learn. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, hit, hit, uh, hit me up on Twitter though if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and and bonus, if you present at GlobalCon, they'll give you an all-access pass, so you can see all this amazing content. So, yes. for those of you who are uh, <laughs> thinking of presenting, consider signing up for to be a presenter at GlobalCon. You get a lot of perks. Yes. Yeah. The um. Yeah, the the way that I did it at the previous sessions was used um, used the full full SDK. It didn't interact with the key vault, uh, so a lot of this, yeah, you know, this is a it's a it's a fine way to do it. You know, probably not the best. Um, I know it's secure, but there's going to be better ways to do it. So some of the details about how this was implemented was also due to my um, learning. Yeah, you know, kind of learning as I go while I was setting this up. So um, yeah, so if you if you have any any questions about it, let me know. I'll be happy to try my best 
Um, but like I said, otherwise, as I get better examples here, I'm going to be uh, sharing that as I go.